So to get started with this grading system, you're going to need some sort of criteria that you can assess the student on. Now for the most part, you're going to use a rubric. That's kind of the recommended way to go. And you'll notice I have a rubric embedded on my website right here that the students can look at. But you don't have to use a rubric. It could also be a list of criteria. I do that sometimes. And you don't have to have it embedded on your website. You could have it on paper or anywhere else. The point is that you have either a list of criteria or a grid of criteria that you're going to be assessing that student on. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump on over to Google Forms, and we're going to make a form version of this rubric that I can use to quickly enter data. And each time I fill out one form, I'm going to be adding a line to a spreadsheet so I can collect all that data in one place. Now here I am on, here I am on Google Drive, and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new form. Uh, I'll start by unchecking all the boxes at the top. If you're doing this through a Natick Public Schools or other official Google Apps account, then you want to uncheck all those boxes. If you don't have those boxes, don't worry about it. Not a problem. This just sets up our permissions so that nothing uh, acts a little bit weird. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in a title, so we'll call this Example Project Creating Form. And then I don't need to fill out any of this help text or anything like that because I'm the only person who's ever going to see this. Now the first thing I want to put in here under my questions is something to identify the student by. We need some piece of information for each form to identify which student I'm working with. And we don't actually have to put in all the information because if as long as I have one unique identifying piece of information, I can automatically fill in the other pieces. So for example, if I use last name here, which is what I'm going to do, last name, then I can fill in things like first name, the period that the student's in, the uh, student ID, things like that. I'll make that a required question because I don't want to accidentally submit the form without a last name included. And I'll jump on down to question two, which is going to be a grid. Okay, now if you're uh, doing a checklist, then you might want to use checkboxes. But for a two-dimensional rubric like this one right here, I'm going to need a grid because I've got two dimensions. So let's see, column one, oh, sorry, so that the column labels are going to be exemplary, proficient, and needs improvement. Those are my three categories. Let's call that, let's first of all say that there's three columns, and they're going to be exemplary, these can be anything you want, proficient, needs, improvement. Just gonna, don't forget to title your, uh, your rubric, let's call that rubric. And then under rows, I've got six rows, I believe. Uh, description, instructions, prototype, final product, reflection, and presentation. So let's fill that in. Description, instructions, prototype, final product, reflection, and presentation. So those are all the rows in my table. And I'll make this question required as well because I don't want to forget to fill that in. Click done. And now this is basically what my form is going to look like. And if I click save, now I've got a form. So we'll let that save. And then if I actually go view the live form, that's where I'm going to fill it out. So right now I'm in the form editor. So it says edit form right up here. So I can change this and make it look like whatever I want. But if I go to, you can view the published form here and click on that. Now I'm looking at the actual form that I can fill out. So I can just go ahead and put in last name, tester, and I can fill all these uh, circles in. Choose anything I want to choose, and submit. And then if I want to grade another one, I can click submit another response. Now I'm back to grading a new one. But the beauty of this is if I jump on over to my spreadsheet, the Google Drive that I just made, example project grading form, should see in each line, one submission to the form. So I submitted this form at 10.17 a.m., the last name Tester, and here's the scores that that student got. So basically what you're going to do is keep this open while you're grading, and every time you look at another student, so for example, let's say this student is Tester 2, I'll go ahead and grade them, click Submit, now I'm ready to submit another response. So basically we're removing all the time spent between students and just being able to grade one project after another very, very quickly.